Welcome to Psychos and Sociopaths. Today we're going to talk about Henry Lee Lucas. Now, the thing about the, the, the reason why I bring him up, he was a serial killer. He supposedly killed, uh, in some of the biographies that I looked at or the document. Like 11 people? No, 200. Yeah, well, I mean, he's being, uh, <laughs> he wrote, he admitted to like over 100, almost 200 people, but he's got 11 convictions, so yeah. Yeah, well, three confirmed, eight uh, disputed, uh, claimed hundreds. Uh, now, he, he is considered a married concilio killer. Uh, he, uh, he was captured by the Texas Rangers. That's, that's the thing about this case. And he kept on uh, getting convicted over other charges and everything and pro- basically prolonged his uh, life and everything. Right. Was because the basic fact of he kept on saying, oh, I did this. But what, what, what one cop found out, it was either a cop or prosecuting lawyer. I think it was a cop. Uh, found out was the Texas Rangers were feeding him information. Maybe they were just uh, trying to, I guess, close a lot of cold, cold quick cases. Maybe. Yeah, that that was that was actually the deal. But what ended up happening is uh, a lot of the cases were thrown out. He still got the death penalty. Right. Or no, he didn't get the death penalty. And. Uh, George Bush uh, brought his conviction down to life imprisonment instead of death row. Yeah. Um, I mean, he got to the point to where... Uh, he ended up dying with a natural causes in prison, right? Down, uh, yeah, in 2001. Yeah, up in Huntsville. Or Huntsville uh, congestive heart failure, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. But he... It's one of those cases that... And, and there's a couple of them that the murderer just wanted the attention and everything. I mean, he got uh, strawberry uh, uh, shakes, milkshakes, every time he was in uh, in there uh, doing the confession and everything, and all the cigarettes so you can smoke and blah, blah, blah. And this is like in the 80s, so they were able to do that. And right now, any kind of prison or anything, you can't smoke. You can't uh, have any kind of contraband on the outside. But that... It just uh, goes to show that sometimes they have lazy detectives. Yeah. And this is not going against our uh, police force. Our police force, in certain cases and everything, uh, there's there's always that one person that wants to take the lazy route. Yeah. Like it. <clears throat> like reading up on uh, one case, they'll they usually go after like if the wife is killed. They'll go after the husband hardcore and everything like that because usually the the down it's usually a family member and everything like that. But looking at the person, they defend themselves more on the outside than the inside. Basically, the uh, outside of their home more than the inside of the home. Mm-hmm. You would st- instinctively look for a person that's somewhere on the outside. It could be like a jealous uh, woman or uh, a co-worker that wants to, them and Phil Shun and everything like that. But in this case, Henry ended up just confessing to anything. And there there are criminals like that. They just, they feel, some of them feel really guilty and some of them want the intention of, uh, I was like, oh, I got all this tension when I broke the law the first time. Let's get more by confessing to this other one. And it eventually it was more or less the uh, rangers that were feeding him the information to the point to where he knew stuff that the cops, uh, only the cops knew, which the only reason why he knew is because the cops were telling him, hey, this is what happened and everything. Confess to this one so we can get it out of our uh, stock. And it's just lazy police work. Yeah, uh, it, it, it resulted in a uh, reevaluation of police techniques. Uh, they brought, brought false confessions and the awareness of them up to the forefront investigators they didn't consider that the petty privileges like we were talking about like steak dinners cigarettes uh, milkshakes things of that nature tv privileges that that i mean they would get these people that are basically at this point institutionalized uh you know by the penal system 
they know they're not going. You know that they would never make it on the outside. So I mean, they've got three hots in a cot. They got everything they you know that they could need. They're basically on vacation. You know, they're just you know it, it, they just they don't go anywhere. Well, but, there there's actually cases of uh, homeless people during the like winter months and everything. They commit more crimes during the winter months so they can get arrested and. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> but I, I don't think that that necessarily correlates to the false confession, but uh, pandemic, or, well, we'll just say pandemic, but um, I know that that word gets tossed around a lot. Let's face Best it, COVID is a pandemic. There is a difference. However, all that aside, um, you know, they, they it, it forces, it forced investigators to re reevaluate how they do things. I mean, the, the Texas Rangers and some of the investigating officers for these cold cases were giving him access to the case files. So, you know, to refresh his memory. And a lot of the stuff that's contained in those case files, only a perpetrator would know. Yeah, the only the only case that he actually, uh, they actually found the body and everything was the 14-year-old girl that he, uh, he killed. Right. And the old woman, because the bodies were, well, his mother. Yeah. His mother and the 14-year-old kid. Uh, they were, they found the bones and everything, the stash, that, uh, the place that he, uh, they were buried and everything. And that was something that he was only known. And then after that, he just kept on getting more convictions because they kept on feeding him stuff to get the cases off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, talking about matricide. I mean, that's what they're calling it. But uh, in 59, he traveled to... Uh, Temesca, Michigan, I know I probably butchered that, but to live with his half-sister, Opal, uh, he was engaged to marry a pen pal whom he had corresponded while he was incarcerated the first time. Um, when Lucas's mother visited him for Christmas, she disapproved of her son's fiance, insisted that he move back to Blacksburg, Virginia, um, so she could take care of him as he grew older, or, as she, or so he could take care of her when she, as she grew older. Um, he refused, they argued. Um, and on January 11th of 60, she hit him over the head with a broom, and he smacked her, and he stabbed her in the neck. Uh, he, all he, and then he fled. The only thing that he said he remembered was is that he slapped her alongside the neck, but after he did, she fell, and he decided to grab her. Um, but it, she fell to the floor, and then I went to go pick her up, realized she was dead. Then I noticed I had my knife in my hand, and she'd been cut. So it's almost kind of like he blacked out a little bit. Yeah, he went on on that case. He went on uh, self defense. Yeah, they only give him like what twenty years. Yeah, and he was out. Like he that. was out, and he was out by ten for good behavior, and it was uh, overcrowding. But yeah, uh, he, <clears throat> and, and the reason why, I think the reason why I mean one he fled the scene, but. The the stories conflict between him and his half sister. When Opal got home, found the mom in the pool of her own blood. She was still alive. So they called the ambulances or ambulance, but the ambulance arrived too late. She died while they were en route. So according to him, she was dead, and then he fled. But according to the sister, she was still alive and died waiting for the ambulance to get there. So you know, there's some discrepancy there. Which I think, which is why the the self defense worked, but it didn't for that first one for you know for his mom. But uh, I mean, at some point, you you knew that that had to at least at some point wear on him a little bit. I mean, well, he was. I, I wasn't and, able to find any kind of like documentation or any kind of research out there that showed that he'd been abused, molested, or anything like that. Um, I mean, if well, I mean, maybe the abuse because I mean, yeah. yeah, and I get that that's why he's using that as self defense. Like, you know, it was like a snap reaction. This is why he did what he did. But, but I'm it's the as far second, as like, the second murder was yeah, totally different, right? But I mean, like, the only thing really that you could see that, <clears throat> um, I mean, it, it, it talks about, um, his mother, Viola, yeah, was a prostitute. She'd force her son to watch. Well, it was, was... Ba- from what I gathered on another interview. It was the father. Uh, the father was a drunk. Yeah, he was a drunk, and, and died. the mother was a prostitute. And they, from what I gathered on my, it's one of those ones where we got cross information. 
Yeah. Because I mean, it was the father and the mother made him watch. And he... Yeah, so, I mean, it, it's either the father and mother made him watch them or the mother made her made him watch her with clients. Uh, there's also the, the whole thing about uh, she cross-dressed him and made him wear that stuff out in public. Kind yeah. Of it, but, it, I mean, you think about it, back in the 40s and 50s, just, that's... That was really weird. That was, that was I mean, really off-putting. That was really off-putting, and that was beyond taboo for back in the day. I mean, it's still yeah. taboo now. Um, eh, they're trying to make cross dress well, cross dressing to an extent is becoming more mainstream. But as far as like the parents doing it to the child, yeah, because a lot know, of the times that was considered a punishment back then. Yeah, I mean, back then it would have been a punishment, but you can see where like maybe the wires got crossed up in his head back then. Uh, I mean, I mean, he was in and out of. Uh, prison, juvie hall, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it went to the point to where he was robbing houses, he was doing all kinds of stuff to where he ended up in jail. Mm-hmm. He wasn't advocated to as the best person in the world. Right. But a lot of the cases that he actually uh, confessed to, there was no way he could have done it. And they started, uh, uh, this detective, uh, let me see if I can, uh, da, 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 da. see if I can find it. Uh, there was a journalist, uh, journalist, uh, Hugh Answorth. he started, uh, doing the uh, investigation of it from the, uh, Dallas Times Herald. And he just, he just found it. It was like he was 11,000 miles away from the actual crime at yeah. the time. I mean, right. it was a, it was actual uh, work stamp from his work in Florida that he apparently cross country and like, from what they described, he would have to drive two days without any sleep to get there, kill the person, and come back. Right. And that was impossible. They just there was a lot, a lot of description, and finally they actually wised up and was like. Maybe we should look at this in a different aspect. And that's how they uh, figured up a lot of the stuff that uh, he was being force-fed by the uh, uh, Texas Rangers. They even, they even had a task force called the Lucas Task Force to get all the bodies and uh, deaths that actually happened that yeah. he confessed to. Yeah, and I just... Once he was in custody... I think that, you know, we really started to see, I mean, because he went on that false confres- you know, confession spree. But do I think there was a lot of coercion? Yeah. Do I think it was a lot of lazy detective work? Absolutely. Uh, they were taking advantage of the fact that at this point, I mean, this guy's a tortured soul, not making excuses for him in any, by any stretch, but they were taking advantage of his mental state. Uh, yeah, because at the end he wanted—he actually wanted the death penalty because of all the guilt he was feeling. Yeah, you know, and and so there was also the thing too. I mean, he was accusing, prison, you know, uh, prison personnel, stripping him naked, keeping him in cold cells, torturing his, you know, his genitalia, uh, denying him cigarettes. You know, which nowadays it's like, oh, too bad you can't smoke. Yeah, but, um, you know, it. it there, there was so much wrong with the system back then that... Well, it's something in the system that you can't really... Unless it's brought to the... Unless it's made... Public. Public. It's... I don't want to use the word systemic because that word gets tossed around a lot, especially in today's lexicon, but... I think that... <clears throat> For lack of a better term, yeah. I mean, just the system, the way that it was run, it was very systemic because it was so ingrained <coughs> with investigators trying to get notoriety, you know, uh, case, yeah, back in case, the- case, case closure percentage, things of that nature. I mean, cold cases, they really didn't want the cold cases there. Um, and this was before they had any kind of like, I mean, if, if you got a confession, there was no need. Well, you got, kind of you got testing. more rank and more uh, notoriety. Yeah, no, notoriety, notoriety, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for closing cases. Right. 
it was more beneficial to close the case than it was to not close the case. That's what you'll see that even now nowadays, yeah. especially with prosecutors' offices. They'll have people that they want to, you know, I mean, they'll they'll have people that you know that the, uh, arrested on charges that they don't have any. I mean, they they don't have enough evidence to take to court. Uh, or the evidence is so circumstantial that you have to twist it and put it, you know, to take it out of context to even remotely get something. Um, or cases where people have uh, pending felony charges. And, you know, normally they say you can indict a ham sandwich, but there's there's cases even here in this county where they they don't have enough to take to the grand jury because they know that as soon as they put it get in front of a grand jury, it'll get no build and they'll have to drop it. And, that and so, almost happened with the case with Ava and her murder. Right. Uh, because he only got like 14 years, and mm-hmm. half of it was served anyway. Right. And a lot, of, yeah, I mean, a lot of, they'll just keep you in the system. They'll keep you incarcerated until they can get a, you know, either fabricate it or they can find the evidence out there. But, you know, in a lot of cases where they don't have it and they end up having to drop these charges, they hide behind that, well, we were just doing our due diligence, and you don't get... Recon- you don't get compensated for that time. That's just lost. They, they, they. It, it, the system. I've heard it said that that the moniker of "you're innocent until proven guilty" is dead. And and it, a lot of it is because they they use terms like uh, in pursuant, like they'll they'll confiscate a piece of your personal property. Yeah. In pursuant. Well, that's what to happened with uh, Eddie. Yeah. Uh, because. He was in uh, CSI or NCIS. NCIS, there we go. That was the Navy one. Uh, he needed to make a phone call, so he had to open up his phone. By law, they can't open up your phone. Yeah. But if you open it up making a phone call, they can snatch it away and get all the information that way. That's what happened with him. Yeah. And that's just lazy uh, police work. They don't want to. It is. It's it's using grammatical loopholes in what used to be called the Patriot Act. Um, I'm not. I, I think that a majority of the Patriot Act, if not all of it, I think is about to expire. I could be yeah, wrong on that. Yeah. But, hold on. But I think it is actually going to expire. That's and to I'm, a degree, I think that that's a good thing because. It really a lot, and, and don't get me wrong. I mean, I support. We already give enough free, uh, all of our information, anyways. Yeah, I half mean, the time. A, a lot, don't you know, now, people that listen to or, or watch us on on YouTube. We are unabashedly supporters of the military, first responders, law enforcement. We 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 back the blue, and we black. You know, we back the the men and women in green. But to an extent, I do believe that the police have to an extent as far as the investigative side of it they have the I don't want to use the term too much power or too much reach because I mean obviously they need they need to be able to do their jobs effectively but they were able to do their jobs effectively before they were given these intrusive ability you know these intrusive uh, permissions or privileges. You see where I'm going with that? Yeah. It, it's it's being able to snatch somebody's phone or be able to st- you know get a warrant. If you if you want something, get a warrant. And then you you call the person down and they have to surrender that piece of property or you arrive at their house with a warrant for that piece of property and that piece of property alone. Oh, we don't have the Patriot anymore. Okay. Yeah. So I mean. Yeah, because they had a the Senate uh, the Senate passed a seventy seven day extension in March twenty twenty, but the House House of Representatives did not pass the legislation uh, before departing the recess on March twenty seventh, twenty twenty. Right. So. So I mean, I but but back in the eighties, they didn't need it. They didn't need any of that. So I mean, they got creative, and that's where it really started to dwell into the uh, almost the fabrication of evidence uh, coercion I mean unless you were there because I don't to my knowledge they didn't even do like video recordings of interviews until 
88 or no 80 80 no it was sometimes in the 80s yeah well, i think it was the late 80s i think it was like yeah. 86 87 they did no, start it was 83 video. was it yeah okay because you know it, but as far as like the checks and balances to make sure that the integrity of the inter- interview was was taking place that wasn't in place whenever they were trying to whenever he went on this whole false confession uh, spree and i mean yeah it was november of 83 but you know, and, and honestly, I don't think that that stuff started taking place until '84. Uh, a lot of the stuff that he because a lot of the reform for the interview process, the investigative process, pol- uh, uh, procedural uh, SOP for the for, for police departments, even I mean nationwide, really, didn't start taking place until after this case. Because they went back and they started realizing, oh, <laughs> you dangle a ca- carrot in front of a donkey or a horse long enough, they're they, you know they're going to pull whatever you want, you know whatever you put behind them. So I, I think that, yeah, like you said earlier at the beginning of the episode, lazy investigative work, lazy police work, uh, guys just out there trying to make a name for themselves, saying, hey, look, I pinned this on the most prolific serial murderer in American history kind of a thing. And they just wanted their name attached to that, and that was their way to get in. And And, and really there was nobody there that could check that, check up on them, you know, that to... to Call them out to the woodshed on it, so to speak. No, they started videotaping uh, confessions in 1975. In 75? Yeah. Okay. Well, then maybe it was just, uh, I don't know, maybe, I, then I don't know. But it. let me see here. Yeah. I just, but it. I mean, because they went from 213 previously unsolved murders, and, and then they officially cleared them and put those on Lucas. Yeah. And... Another thing, I mean, when I mean, it was okay. It was mandated recording and investigations in 1985. That's what it is. Okay, so it was an option. So they weren't recording his interviews because they knew that if they'd have gone back and looked at the tape, you know, I mean, it, I mean, even even audio recording. I mean, because at that point, all you're relying on is the notes. And here's another thing that a lot of people don't understand on something like this is. Some people will go up and go, well, at least they closed the case. The person, they, the family gets closure. And then you find out the murderer is still out there killing, living free, free uh, air. Yeah. Yeah. No, that doesn't settle for me. No, it I mean. It, it didn't settle for me until, like, after the case with Ava, after she was m- murdered. Yeah. That's when I felt relief. I mean, to that point... I bruised up my hand a lot. Yeah, you're <laughs> going to give these people this this glimmer of hope that life can return to some degree of normalcy, only to yank the rug out from underneath their feet, in in the name of what, expedience, and and some kind of congratulatory certificate to hang on your wall. Yeah, and it's like the case with the uh, uh, dating, uh, dating dating game dating killer. killer. Yeah, I mean one of the mothers didn't see the satisfaction that he was killed. Or he was executed, and sh- they kept on prolonging it, and it just sucks that some people don't get that kind of gratification. And 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 pe- and I say gratification, and a lot of people was like, "Oh, that's sick," and everything like that. No, the gratification is for the relief that the person that did harm to your child, yeah. or something that you loved, yeah, is I mean- now non-existent and not breathing any kind of air yeah and, and like exact exactly i mean if if somebody were to come in to do something to one of my kids i would uh i would help you buy her the body it wouldn't be no <laughs> questions asked yeah. and like dude someone happened to my kid i'm like dave why are you grabbing the shovel you'd be like this is, is it town. not a is it not a shovel moment you, you'd sit there on the couch and just be like this is a waste of time. Why aren't we bare, uh Whose car are we taking? You know, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know. But, you know, I mean, if somebody were to do something to one of my kids, dude, I would not rest until that person ceased to be a member of this mortal coil. Whether, you know, and I say that, generally I'm a pretty peaceful person because, you know, we know what it means to be violent, but we choose to not. Yeah. Whereas people who don't know what it has, you know, what it truly means to be violent, but they use those steps anyway, those people are just useless. Yeah. You know, uh, but it, it, I mean, those are the dangerous ones. 
you know, to, to look for because those are the people who think that they've got something to prove. Yeah, every but, time I've done any kind of violent act or anything like that, I mean, very violent act. There's almost an instantaneous uh, remorse. Yeah, I fucking regretted it, especially, you know, stupid bar fights. Oh, God, yeah. God. I mean, yeah, you know, back in the day when we were younger, we were on active duty, whatever, and you get to the bar fight, and you're like, afterwards, you just you're sitting there beating your chest because you're like, I whooped that dude's ass. But, I mean, but after a while, you, you even now, it's like you look back and you reflect on it, and you're like, fuck, what the hell was I thinking? I was a dumb motherfucker back then. Yeah. You know, it's like, and then you look, and, and you're and like. It's so, most of the times, it, it's just something, like, really incon- inconsiderate stupidity. Yeah. You know, uh, like someone's uh, girlfriend looks at you and you you just wave and I mean, boyfriend it, gets so pissed off. Yeah, I, it, I mean, the guy was ugly. He probably had like a huge cock. That's all I'm saying. And I try to I try to say that to him. And he's like, he wasn't having it. You know, I'm trying to defuse the carry on. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how I would handle that. And I'd be like. I mean, I don't know what it is you got going on for you, dude, but you keep on doing you. Yeah. That probably wouldn't help either. But, you know, I think the biggest takeaway from his particular case is not so much the fact that he's now dead and gone. No, we didn't execute him. He died of natural uh, of congestive heart failure while he was incarcerated in Huntsville. But All those uh, strawberry milkshakes. Yeah, no, I think the biggest takeaway is at least until the Patriot Act became a thing, it was at least a temporary reform of the way that police and law enforcement conduct their investigations. There's a right, moral, and legal way to do it. But you start, you know, and you and it's becoming more and more of a thing. Given and there, and there, there are some... Given who's that, in office now. Okay, and yes, this is a political thing to a point. But given who's in office, given what party is in power, you start to see, you're seeing a trend back the other way where we they were conducting investigations and doing honest-to-God gumshoe work. Yeah. The investigators didn't go into an investigation with any kind of bias, whether it be gender, political, race, whatever. They went in looking for a suspect, and they followed the clues. Now, it, all it takes is... Somebody slapping their name on a piece of paper saying, saying, I swear under oath of perjury, and they'll consider that almost gospel, where they'll be like, okay, the, the, you know, the, 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 the investigating detective will get it, and they will be like, I'm going to go after this person. And they're going to look at, you know, if you, if you look at one person, and, and that's your finite point of focus, you're going to start seeing things through rose-colored, you know, or rose-colored glasses. You're going to see them through a collide, through a, through a prism, and the facts will bend to fit whatever narrative that you've got planted into your head. Yeah, that's one reason why, when any kind of crime a person sees, they have to take like two days off to reform what they're actually seeing. Yeah, it, it, and that and that's that that's just any kind of this right, person but, that's trying to investigate. We're, but we're seeing police departments, we're starting to see prosecutors offices. We're starting to see them trend towards that finite biased form of investiga- you know, investigating where they see this person did something even if they didn't do it. You know, they've got all of the forensic evidence to back it up. I mean, these days you've got GPS, you've got uh, I mean, phone tracking, I mean, it, Whatever it is, I mean, we've got location services well, you on got our phones. Video camera, yeah, you know, you every get, everything is almost video camera, and almost this. everybody to to a letter. You're constantly taking pictures and posting that crap on social media, and what is it doing? It's tagging the location, right? So it's exactly. almost like you're getting a map of this person's itinerary throughout the course of that particular day. Yeah, cause and I was actually talking. Uh, talking to somebody how ho- uh, hard it would be uh, to commit murder nowadays because the uh, ring. Yeah, the ring. The, I just bought my parents one. Yeah. For their garden because a, a, a ton of their, I mean, like probably about half of their garden was either pilfered by squirrels or somebody who didn't want to go and pay for vegetables or take the time to grow their own. Yeah. And so I, I went and bought my parents a ring camera. And we're, I'm going to get one for their front door. 
you know, a doorbell uh, with the camera on it. You know, so that way they've got that peace of mind. They got that security. You can't pass by. You can't drive through a neighborhood anymore nowadays without getting picked up by somebody's motion sensor. Yeah, and it's not even, you know, rich people's neighborhood anymore. No, so, I mean, I mean every, it's, it's when I'm doing. When it's I'm doing, every level of income. Yeah. Somebody they'll either have a motion light, which you can get for dirt cheap nowadays. Oh yeah. You know, or they'll have a camera, like a Ring or or a, a VivNet or whatever it is that they're doing using yeah. nowadays, or, or even some of these like cheap Chinese child labor, you know, camera systems you can pick up at, at Harbor Freight. They've got some some form of surveillance on their home, watching their property or angled down the street, surveilling part of their neighborhood. So I mean, uh, just the digital footprint that you find in neighborhoods alone almost makes it damn near impossible to prowl anywhere unless you know it. I mean, you, you case up and down a street there in the middle of the day when nobody thinks about it, yeah. you know, thinks to look at it, and you go back under the cover of darkness and you can figure out where those sensors are tripping, you know. it's it's. I think a lot of it is the fact that people are, just like investigators, are lazy. They don't want to put in the work, so they take the, le- the road of least resistance. Well, it's not every investigator. There's always not every investigator. <laughs> it's, True, and, and that is a it, white paintbrush. So let me let me retract that and revise my statement. Yeah. Okay. Again, I support the police. I have no problem with the police. There are certain members of the police community that, yeah, I do have a problem with, and that's just because they they operate. They're supposed to be on this pedestal, and they're not. To me. Members of the, of the law enforcement community, they, they have to adhere to a moral standard and then operate above that because they, they're the ones who are ultimately supposed to be the ones judging us. So they have to make themselves beyond reproach. And there are some members of that community that are not doing it. But to that same token, people that are out there perpetrating these crimes, a lot of the reasons why they get caught these days is because of the digital footprint. Yeah. They don't take the time to invest the, the the manpower, the resources, because they really truly wanted to do something, they would put in the due diligence to do it. You're either gonna get caught on video, you're gonna get caught on picture, you're gonna get caught on audio. Somebody is going to see you. If you got that cell phone in your pocket, guess what? Your location services 99% of the time are turned on and you are being tracked either through your Google Maps timeline, through your Apple Maps timeline, or even some kind of GPS tracking like uh, like Life 360. Somebody can always see where you're at on the Apple uh, Apple devices, the Find My Friends app, right? Find My iPhone. You're always somebody's going to always be able to see where you're at. Unless you just you know, leave all of your digital stuff at home. Even then, to a degree, sometimes, even your vehicles are getting tracked. Yeah. Okay. So even, even but but the point is is that whenever whenever he was going on this false compression or confession spree, the investigators were taking full advantage of the loopholes that were in the system at the time. It was. Um, my brain just completely vapor locked on me. That but was the uh, any any you can do that with sneezes. Do that to a person that you don't want uh, want to give them uh, their talking and everything, but you want to end the conversation, sneeze in front of them, or fake sneeze in front of them. You can get out of the conversation. It's old uh, trick that I learned from somebody. Oh, okay. uh, <clears throat> I promise you, it's not my first episode, so I mean I can't. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um. No matter what your track record, you're already going to fuck up one die. That's all I got to say. Now. Point is, I, because I think the takeaway from the, the Henry Lee Lucas uh, uh, saga, we're just going to call it that. Okay. Is that there were reforms made in the investigation community as far as procedures are concerned, standards, checks and balances, the, the integrity of the system improved, at least for a little while. We're starting to see it trend back the other way. And I, we, you but know, it's, when, trending, when can only sit- it's, it's actually trending back towards uh, 
not towards the actual uh, beneficial. It's it's trending towards, <clears throat> sorry, it's trending to the p point where everybody's uh, knows what they're talking about because of the cameras. I mean, there's good side and bad side uh, because because everybody has a camera nowadays. The bad sa side is is everybody's videotaping the. Uh, criminal doing a horrible act and now it's the cops that are bad like the case to where a uh, guy had a knife and everything or, or he, the closest one that we have right now is that uh, young girl that got shot a couple of times mm -hmm. because of the fact of she was about to stab another girl yeah but that was on video not only by stand by uh, bystanders with the body cam for that particular officer. Yeah. He was exonerated. Yeah. Now, that didn't keep the public court or the, the, the court of public opinion or LeBron James. The He's not the GOAT. What can we call him? I don't... Uh... His new nickname, as far as this show is concerned, is just the hairline. Um, I would I would go more or less the, uh, uh, the China spokesman for the United States. I mean, even he though, doesn't, even he doesn't though, even come close to resembling John Cena. Well, you can't really see John Cena. That's why you have to go with uh, LeBron James. You can see LeBron James. You can't see John Cena. You know what you can't see on LeBron James? A full head of hair. <clears throat> <laughs> anyway, so we yeah we we're seeing it trend the way that we don't want it to. The yeah, investigating everybody, practices everybody are becoming lazy. Two cents in. Yeah. Everyone Instead wants to be able to attach. Look into the next, next it's all about percentages. It's all about clicks. It's about clickbait. It's about yeah. It's about about click rates. It's it's about. Uh, but it's really nothing new. It's about conviction ratings, especially yeah. with or DAs. It's about their conviction rating because that's what they campaign on. Yeah. But well, that's, at some point we're going to be able to get that to go back the other way. We're going to be able to see that trend back the way that it's supposed to, where we start to see these really honest to good or honest to goodness investigative practices that help dispel the negative negative connotation that you would normally associate with the police because a lot I mean, part of the bad rap that police get these days is because you've got those lazy detectives out there yeah. you've got those lazy investigators you've got those lazy DAs and those lazy prosecutors that just they take the path of least resistance and they're looking at it and saying well, sounds like him. Mm. It probably or, is. It probably is him. You know, yeah. it, take the time to check yourself before you completely wreck not only yourself but this individual that you're targeting. And the ninety, you know, and I'm not saying ninety percent of the time, but a good portion of the time, the person that you're targeting, not the tree that you need to be barking up. Yeah. Because it's usually, you know, like a case where. Yeah. Oh, you know, it, it, you can't really come up with any cases nowadays because a lot of this. You stuff, really can't. I mean, because okay, the thing that I, I want to get away from this is the fact that a lot of the times you look at a case and everything like that, and you have to ask why did he do it. Yeah. And that was another thing that they couldn't come uh, come from it was. Uh, a lot of serial killers have MOs. They do it this way because of this. He didn't, though. He, he really didn't. did. No, he didn't. The The reporter verified that. Oh, yeah. He was like, this serial killer did uh, only killed these types of people. Right. He didn't. And there's a lot of times that he was actually in prison and the murder happened three days later that he got out. So it, it couldn't have been him, but they still right. prosecuted him. And it really is, there's lazy people in any kind of job. Yeah. Whether this whether isn't, they're this isn't not, about... Yeah. Poli uh, uh, it's, not poli it's not political. It's not anti-police. Yeah. It's not anti-criminal. There anti -criminal. are lazy people out there yeah, that just, just want the notoriety. Oh, I did something good. They, they want to suck on that little teat and get that little notoriety. It's like, I did something important. I did something important. Mm, this milk's so good. But they don't want to actually do the actual legwork. 
You gotta admit, that was a good one. Oh. <clears throat> Mommy said it was good. Fuck. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> okay, so on that note, yeah. Um, we did take a couple of weeks off from this series, and I think that we really kind of needed that reset. Um, we we did revisit the Menendez case. With yeah, our, with uh, our, with our I, I, I kept everything up and going. We only did like uh, one week, but I I kept it going. Johnny had to get some stuff done with his uh, stuff, and he needed. I I I was telling I was I was like, man, I, I really believe that you needed like a little break from it. Yeah, because I... even even I need a break, but I I like push through it half the time, and you can really tell at times. But I really did. Uh, need a break, not from you, just <laughs> well, just in general. That was apparent because we kept shooting other episodes for some of our other series. But yeah, um, just a, as a quick side note, update on the archery episode. Uh, the gentleman that we filmed with on the second day, Adrian. Adrian, he uh, I did contact him. He did reach back out to me. <clears throat> he he had to get some things settled on his uh, on his front. Hey, he still needed to talk to Pruitt. Yes. Because um, I, I talked to him. People have been avoiding me here yeah. lately. Well, I can understand. You are kind of off putting. But the. Uh... <laughs> no, he's absolutely right. Yeah, no. Most people call me a creeper. I'm out of line, but I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not wrong. Yeah. Um... <laughs> it's, one of, it's one of those things. It's like someone else. So, okay, best example. Best example is me and Bill. Best example is me and Bill. If you didn't know how we actually, you know, talk to each other and everything. <laughs> right. Because everybody thought that when we were at work that I hated Bill. I mean, just just hated him. And it came around, they finally uh, uh, listened to us talk and everything like that. And he's like, I thought you hated Bill. I was like, no, I don't hate Bill. I love Bill. Bill's great. Well, traditionally, with the but exception it, of maybe one person that I've known that's ever been named Bill 99.999 repeating percent of the time they're insufferable dickheads so yeah I mean I could see where you know that would come but uh, getting back to with the archery episode uh, the the custom bowstring that I ordered mm-hmm. on the ep- during the episode uh, he said he had everything laid out he had to put it on the stretcher to yeah. uh, stretch the string out um, I'm hoping that I hear from him at some point today or tomorrow so I can take the bow over there and he can get everything all squared away. Um, he does want to sit down with us. He does want to be on the show. And I told him, you know, hey, look, we're, we're ready, you know, kind of a deal. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to keep pressing forward. We're, you know, I think we should do that Gypsy Rose Girl next. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was, I was going to suggest Because that. I, I saw that there was a uh, – There was a small like snippet of a YouTube video that I saw, and it and it was from Gypsy Rose being arraigned in court. And if you watch that show, The Gift, the the way that that girl in the show was talking, uh, she just nailed it. nailed that role. I'm like, good God! I mean, I, it, all I when I, I heard, actually I, I got confused. Yeah, I was like, is this what is this? And I was like, oh wait, no, this is not a preview for the show. I'm like, holy crap! But yeah. yeah, I think next week we should because uh, Gypsy Rose, yeah. Gypsy Rose next week. So get ready for that. I think we're gonna probably try to squeeze that into an hour. Too bad, too bad this episode isn't gonna come out the same time frame as what we're doing this weekend. Uh, I'm thinking about doing everything on uh, Facebook Live. Just set, set up. Uh, oh, you know, the no, camera you know what everything. we need to do is uh, we can try to do a, like a like a YouTube live. We can't do YouTube. Yes, you can. We can't do YouTube live. There's a live feature on YouTube. Yeah, there is. If you have mm-hmm. the uh, stuff for it, you have to have so much stuff for it. I'll show. I'll show you after we get done. No, I've done, I used to on my personal channel. I've done. I've done lives before. Really? Yeah, from my phone. Okay, then we'll do it live. So, but it, it'll upload the episode anyway. Yeah. Automatically, and then we can just pull the audio from that, so we can put it on. Uh, 
Spotify. Well, actually, you know what? I don't know if that the, the live episode would necessarily translate. I mean, because if we're doing live, I mean, it's all going to be visual. It, it's it's all good. Anyway. So yeah. So um, I mean, we do just have to. If, if you're subscribing for, uh, to our channel, which you should be on YouTube, uh, hit the subscribe button, smash the bell for the notifications, so you get notified every time we do something. Um, follow us on Facebook, Angry Me Production, Facebook.com. Yeah. Um, Twitter. We're on, the, we're on the Twitters. Yeah, we're on the Twitter sphere. Uh, Angry Me Production One, or at Angry Me Production One. Um, I think it's Product One. Product. Let me there. look. Don't don't get me all fucked up and sideways here. Because uh, a lot of the stuff that I have to put on. Uh, the, I was like, I tried to do the Instagram thing again too. Yeah, at I, Angry Me Product One on Twitter yeah. um, so give us a follow on there but uh, yeah because uh, I took over that Twitter account so I'm trying to every time we drop an episode I'm trying to toss the link on there so that way I can go ahead and retweet it on my personal one just which don't is, go on the search thing because you'll find that when I've been searching I still use it to search yeah I've been going out and having to like clear out a lot of the follows that you put on there because you know Dude, yeah, I get those random ass recommended tweets, and I'm like, "You son of a bitch." Tim Pool is great, though. Dude, <laughs> I'm sitting there going, "I'm waiting. I'm, 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 I'm absolutely waiting for my phone to be sitting on the nightstand." And my lovely girlfriend is visiting me, and then I get this blink notification on there, and I go to look at it, and there's a set of tits there on my Twitter, you know, on my Twitter notification. Then I've got to sit there and explain what the fuck, because oh wait, when we had two followers, you were out there using it for your uh, what is, you were using it as your personal incognito browser. No, sir. No, no. I am. I am in the process of revamping our Twitter account because I feel. I feel attacked. You should. <laughs> you fucking damn well should. I feel. It's like the whole uh, uh, Yoda thing. Friend, friend of mine attacked me because I. Well, I used to get drunk and everything, and uh, think this thing was a Yoda, and apparently it was just a raccoon, and I scratched the holy hell out of my back. <sighs> And it's kind of horrible. Anyways, psychos and sociopaths. Thanks for watching, people. Before we close, no, 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 no. Saturday, no. we oh, are yeah, doing yeah. a live episode. No, no, no. On... This episode is going to be up on Saturday. No, no. Uh, I'm saying yeah. on Saturday we will be possibly going live. From yeah, they're the... not going to hear it though. If they're on YouTube, they'll see it. If you're following us like you should, you should get that notification telling us that Angry Me Production is live on YouTube. Yeah, it comes out on uh, midnight on Saturday, so yeah. Right, no, the to... episode that you upload, will get everybody will get the notifications no, for. No, I'll, I'll upload it like tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, anyways. Follow me here, work with me, okay? Okay. We're walking, we're walking, and we're stopping. On Saturday from the brisket cook-off competition yes. at American Legion Post 169 here in Wichita Falls, Texas, we will potentially be potentially going live to interview some of the com Contested. Com you know, competition we're, we're teams. We're interviewing them on Friday, and then uh, we're doing the show on Saturday for the judging. Yes. So uh, Friday, uh, the competitors are showing up. They're getting set up. Uh, they're going to be cooking throughout the course of the night. I think the first turn-ins uh, are going to be starting at 11. They're going to start with the beans competition, and then they're going to be progressing throughout the day for, like, uh, smoked sausage, chicken. I think they're going to do ribs. Uh, yeah, ribs is going to be on there, but the big one, the big, is, uh, the, the big pull is going to be for the brisket competition. Uh, we're, we're expecting somewhere close to the neighborhood of 40 competition teams showing up. And... Uh, uh, I believe, if I remember hearing the numbers right, it's like the top 14 brisket cooks from across the state of Texas are supposed to be showing up on Saturday. Yeah, I was thinking about doing the uh, nerd sports outfit. Hey, man, that's on you. I have to show up on Saturday in an official capacity because I'm the new vice commander for the Thomas Fowler American Legion Post. Yeah, I fucking don't. I know you don't. I mean, I hell. Know it's going to be awesome. 
Yeah, I need to get you a membership uh, application so you can. I was a member. We, I need to get a, get you to renew then. Anyways, it's thirty. Just it's, just it's thirty. It's thirty five dollars. Thirty five dollars a year. Thirty five dollars a year. I know. I just I don't do bars anymore. It's just. Yeah. I, I, it's I, not I, a bar. I, it's not I, a bar. I, I got it. It's not a bar. That's the same reason why I don't do. Uh, it's called community outreach, bud. My dad wants me. You're to not quit. allowed to quit ever. My, that means including on your brothers and sisters in arms, even after they come home and take off the uniform. My dad wants You're me. You're not to, allowed to quit. My dad wants me to join Quitter. the Masons too, and I just still haven't done. Quitter. Yeah. Quitter. Yes, I'm guilt shaming you right now, unabashedly, Dude, unapologetically. My family invented the guilt shame. I'm immune. It's like it's like a naked chick trying to get me to do stuff. It's not going to happen. I've been to way too many strip clubs. You know, at the risk of making the most un or politically incorrect statement, I'm just gonna I'm gonna refrain. You know, your your girlfriend finds me funny. That's all I'm gonna say. She's laughing her ass off back there. I can hear it. I have muffled ears, and she's I can hear her laughter. That's what's really sad. She also had sake for lunch. So don't let it go to your head. Yeah, yeah, alcohol will make me a little bit funnier. <laughs> She's over there going, oh, my God, no. <laughs> I drank half the bottle, too, so whatever. <laughs> I'm Johnny Skelton. I'm David Dickerman. Y'all have a good week.